What's going on, y'all? Pope oh, Random Ronson here, and I'm currently in the process of swallowing a rather bitter pill. Folks who love video games, or blidio blames as the cool kids call them. You know what else I really like? Professional wrestling. In particular, All Elite Wrestling. You know what I was really excited about? AEW Fight Forever. Look, on paper, this was supposed to be the perfect game. You got Ukes coming back from the dead to make a WWF No Mercy style AEW game with a thick layer of arcade cheese and Kenny Omega's the spokesperson. Look man, as far as hype for a wrestling game goes, the only way I could have got more hype for this game is if I had Mojo Rowley screaming in my ear about it. I don't know why he'd do that though. Then the game came out and, well, it looked pretty disappointing. I played a little bit of it and it felt, you know, alright, but a lot of it felt pretty empty. You know, the more I heard people talk about it, the more I lost hope. I thought that maybe it could get a chance to rebound in a DLC, but then I saw how expensive the DLC is. Eight bucks for Hook Hobson? Are you fucking kidding me? That's just two characters! It doesn't even add like an arena or a fucking weapon! And finally, after a little under a year, I think I've just gotta accept that this game ain't ever gonna be something that jumps out at me. Like, if it ever goes on sale for cheap enough, I'm sure I'll eventually scoop it up. But the immeasurable amount of hype I had for this game has completely fizzled out, and for once, it's not my depression's fault. So let's walk through a bit of a thought experiment. Now, I enjoyed the little bit of time I spent with the gameplay. It didn't feel one-to-one -one like No Mercy, like I was hoping, but, you know, it was alright enough. I sunk dozens of hours into Showdown Legends of Wrestling when I was a youngster, so, like, I'm able to overlook some of the gameplay stuff if the game checks them up in the other boxes. So as a thought experiment, I wanted to think about what other boxes this game could have checked for me. Let's say that through some wacky Pope shenanigans, I take a swig off the old time flask and I end up back in October of 2019, when an AEW video game was first mentioned, and I wound up in charge of this clown show. What are some of the things that I'd want to focus on, other than the obvious make the gameplay feel good complaints I'm not educated enough to speak smart words do like at thing? Now is a good time to mention that I do not work in the video game industry, and I was a nobody in the wrestling industry. I was some silly guy on the internet imagining his dream game. This might not be the most realistic thing you've seen all week, bucko, and that's okay. If you don't like one of my ideas, or even any of my ideas, it's alright. Nothing I say is ever gonna happen. It's just for fun. Okay, right, where was I? Right, yeah. So, uh, in short, this is how I would have made AEW fight forever. So I guess the first place to start would be the roster. As of recording, AEW Fight Forever has got about 68 characters. Now, for your average fighting game, that's really good. But this is a wrestling game. Wrestling games have huge rosters. And we're in a day and age where you've got more than enough space to pack a bunch of characters in. I don't want to compare this game too much to the WWE 2K games, but the 2K games regularly have well over 100 characters. I mean, hell, WCW Backstage Assault only had 10 fewer characters than this game has. That gets even more embarrassing when you realize that the roster of 68 characters that I'm referencing includes like 16 DLC characters. And one of the characters I was reading off the list was a referee. Folks, according to AEW's website, the men's roster alone has 120 people on it. Now sure, some of those men include folks like Brody Lee Jr. and Stokely Hathaway, but still. So the first thing I'd change is getting that roster deeper. Upon launch, this game should have had at least 80% of the active roster, if not everyone on it. Save the DLC for the new people you hire, and you know, another thing I would have liked to have seen, save that DLC for more legends. I personally love the fact that AEW were able to work out a deal with Martha Hart to get Owen in the game. That might be the coolest thing about Fight Forever. And it's neat that they were able to get a couple of legends from their own roster, like Sting and Paul White in the game, but why the fuck did it stop there? If you look through the list of people AEW have on their roster, you've got guys like Jake the Snake Roberts, Nigel McGuinness, Taz, Arn Anderson, Jeff Jarrett, Chris Hero, Dean Malenko, Christopher Daniels, Jerry Lynn. That's not even going into the licensing possibilities. Look at the names that a game like Ultra Pro Wrestling was able to get. Too Cold Scorpio, Al Snow, The Motor City Machine Guns, The British Bulldogs, Demolition, Chris Candido, Hayabusa, The BWO, Gangrel, Glacier, Canyon, Larry Zabisco, The Sandman, do you know how many names I'm skipping? And Ultimate Pro Wrestling is just an indie title, baby! 
Okay, imagine an AEW hardcore themed DLC pack that includes legends like the Sandman, Sabu, Rob Van Dam, Hayabusa, that would sell gangbusters. Now oh, sure, you've got guys that are under legends contracts with the Fed that you couldn't get in the game, but why not take advantage of who you could? Obviously, any of these guys should come after you've got most of the main roster in place, but tell me it wouldn't be a lot of fun to play like Atsushi Onita versus John Moxley in a barbed wire match. Next up, and this might be my wildest idea on here, I'd want to include more than just AEW in the game. Almost didn't include this on the list, but then I watched an old What Culture video where they did their own wish list for AEW's Fight Forever, and they included this exact same thing, so fuck it, it's on my list. Now, the most obvious company to start with would be Ring of Honor, since AEW already owned them, but why not include companies like TNA, AAA, NOAA, CMLL, New Japan? You know, any of the established allies that'd be willing to play ball. Why would I want them to do this? Easy. Imagine the story mode. Imagine if you start off in some approximation of an indie, if not license out an actual indie, like PWG or something. You know, you work your way up to promotions like TNA or Ring of Honor, you become a star in Mexico, and you become a star in Japan until finally you get your big shot at AEW. You work your way through the ranks of Dark and Elevation before you get put in a spotlight match on Rampage, maybe against an old rival from one of your old promotions. Plus, just imagine the roster possibilities here. Imagine being able to play as old-school Ring of Honor American Dragon Brian Danielson, or having Curry Man as an alternate for Christopher Daniels, being able to use arenas like the Impact Zone or Wrestle Kingdom, being able to choose a six-sided ring like Old School TNA or AAA, being able to play an Ultimate X match. Look, this is probably a really silly, hopeful idea, um, but it's a YouTube video, so that's the kind of idea that we're gonna roll with. Alright, so we got a deeper roster, we got deals with a bunch of other promotions, we could have a really cool story mode, I guess the next logical place is the Creative Wrestler mode. The biggest complaint I hear about this game is that the Creative Wrestler mode is pretty damn shallow, and you just can't have have that in a wrestling game. I'm gonna be bold, I'm gonna say something that maybe not all of you agree with, but honestly, I think they should have completely cut the create and arena mode, save that for like a DLC down the line, double down on create a wrestler stuff. I want this game to have the coolest story mode ever, and I want the players to be able to do it with whatever crazy wrestler exists within their heart, gosh diddly darn it. While I'm at it, now feels like a really good time to say this. WHY THE FUCK DOESN'T THIS GAME HAVE FULL ENTRANCES? ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME? IT'S 2024! COME THE FUCK ON! Alright, now this next section is a little thing I like to call, get weird with it. So let's go from the least weird to the most weird. Ah, uh, first of all, the match types. I love the fact that this game's got an exploding barbed wire deathmatch. I love that it's got the casino battle royal. I even like some things about the Stampede Stadium match, but, like, there's so many obvious gaps here. Where's the steel cage match? What about a tables match? Six-man tags, eight-man tags, three-way tags, four-way tags, handicap matches, and what about the other stuff that's, like, more unique to AEW? The House of Khan has had a number of memorable parking lot brawls. It's had the Blood and Guts match, the Dog Collar match, and that's still me being normal. I call this section Let's Get Weird With It. Give us the themed hardcore matches, like an arcade anarchy match where you could put your opponent's head through a crane machine or powerbomb them onto a whack-a-mole. What about a bunkhouse brawl match where you can fish into a bale of hay and pull out a cracker barrel? Give us the Mimosa Madness match! Why not? It had more or less the same mechanics as like a casket match or an ambulance match. Hell, give us the Elite Deletion! That's as good a segue as any I'm gonna get into the arenas. Look, AEW's starting to get to a point where it's got a number of unique arenas it could have between the five television shows, the various special editions of Dynamite, their different pay-per-views, and if they're working with other companies like I suggested earlier, then they could port all sorts of fun sets and shows from other companies. But we're still in the Get Weird With It section, and man, seeing some of the things that AEW has started to do with their game has started to pump my ads a bit. I love the two variants of the beach stage. I think that the Japanese shrine's pretty neat, even if I wish it would have been set up to be more like a wrestling dojo. I haven't seen the Fright Forever stage yet, but hey, conceptually I love it. 
but I think we can keep pushing it. Where's the Jericho Crew show? Why not have the Mall of America, or at least a ripoff of it as a stage? Fight Forever has a way arcadier feeling than 2K, so why does 2K have all the fun stages? And speaking of stages, where's all the backstage areas to fight in? One of my favorite things about all the old Ukes games was all the fun backstage areas to fight in. You mean to tell me that we couldn't get some of the iconic locations from Daily's Place to brawl around? We couldn't map out an arena? Or what about some of the fun stages? You mean to tell me that we can't brawl all around the beach? I'm the same, feels like a huge missed opportunity to me. Although I do think it's cool that you can suplex people in the water on the beach stage, that makes me happy. Now to wrap up my little get weird with it section, Fight Forever actually has a pretty good variety of weapons with 43 in the game altogether based on what I'm seeing, but there could have been a few more and it could have been a bit weirder. Imagine if you will, the Danhausen DLC, but you get like a jar of teeth that you can hit your opponent with. Or imagine if you reach under the ring and you pull out a giant hunk of cheese as a wink and a nod to No Mercy. This is definitely a nitpick, but I would have loved to see a bit more variety out of the weapons, some more wackier options, you know what I mean? So anyways, that's a bunch of weird ideas, let's get a little bit more grounded. The next thing I would have loved was a more dynamic audio system, let me explain that a bit. In my opinion, the crowds and commentary for wrestling games feels really dated. You got your basic cheers and boos, maybe a couple of chants, the commentary teams read like the same dozen lines for each wrestler that you get sick of by like the end of your first week with the game, and I feel like all of that could be so much better. Sure, it would be a time investment, but imagine how fun it would be if they had the commentary teams getting into the nitty gritty with the matches. Like if you pick MJF and CM Punk, there's commentary lines specifically referencing their rivalry. If someone kicks out of specifically Kenny Omega's One Wing Angel, imagine if the commentary lost their shit. Or if Excalibur had some kind of smartass remark if someone tried to hit the buckshot lariat on Hangman and he reverses it. Let's look out a little further. Imagine if they kept up to date with recording different crowd chants. And with a major update, then the crowd chants got updated. What if you got the voice lines of the wrestlers themselves actually reacting to moves, doing all of their little taunts and grunts and screams of pain themselves? Immersion shouldn't be the top concern of this game, it should feel arcadier to contrast with 2K, but it's little things like that that could help immerse you in the right kind of way. Last little section we have here is on the DLC. Now a game like Fight Forever should absolutely have DLC. There isn't a need for a yearly release if you're still packing this game with new shit to keep people interested, right? Now obviously, you're gonna want to include new wrestlers, whether they be people you've hired since you've released the game, or folks you've licensed from other companies or legends. But you need more of that. Adding Stadium Stampede as a match type is dope, but you gotta keep adding new match types. This is where I'd introduce stuff like Mimosa Madness or the Dog Collar match, personally. The new arenas are also great, keep that up. I mentioned earlier that this is where I'd stick new weapons in something like the Create an Arena mode, but there's three main things I want to discuss with the DLC. First of all, either make that shit cheaper, or include more for the asking price. Earlier I mentioned that $8 Hookhausen DLC. That's exactly the kind of shit I'm talking about here. A DLC with just two characters should be maybe half that price, five bucks max. Or if you want to keep that $8 asking price, include Taz with the bundle. Maybe include the FTW title or that jar of teeth I was talking about. Maybe include a fun arena like the FTW Dojo or a kind of Joe Bob's drive-in set for Danhausen. Either make the shit more affordable or make me feel like I'm getting my money's worth, you know what I mean? Second of all, use the DLC as a way to stay up to date. Yes, I'm talking about the Tony Storm DLC. That still rustles my jimmies. It's insane that it took them as long as it did to get her in the game and it was with the wrong damn gimmick. The wrestling world is constantly changing, always evolving. You've got to stay on top of that. Uh, for example, let's just say that I was able to go back in time and make this game and that right now I was still the lead developer of the game. Well then, right now, I'd be working on finishing up the repackage for the Young Bucks if I don't already have that out. And to be honest, I'd include that for free. Which takes me to the final point of this video, free LC. I'm not gonna suggest to all of you fine folks that all of the DLC in this game would be a free update, especially with some of the ideas that I have pitched. 
that would be silly. What I'm about to suggest giving the fans a hell of a lot more than that insulting freebies for the fans gave you. Seriously, five new songs and like ten pieces of CAW shit, are you fucking kidding me? Nah, instead I'd make sure that every season starts off with some free shit. If a character that's already in the game goes through some kind of a gimmick change, for example, then that's something I'd include in a free pack at the start of the season. If you've got a new match type that could draw in a bunch of new players like the Stadium Stampede, that is something I would include in a free pack at the start of a season. Maybe a couple of wrestlers, maybe a new arena. Include that shit in a free pack at the start of the season, just to let the fans know, hey, we appreciate you guys, thanks for playing our silly little game. Plus, you include some CAW assets and new music. You don't just do that for the freebie. Those are the major changes that I would have made if I were the schmuck in charge of making AEW fight forever. Would any of this have fixed the game? I don't know. I feel like it'd have been better than it is right now, though. What do you guys think, though, and what would you have liked to have seen in AEW fight forever? Let me know in the comments. But about does it for this one though. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Pope, Brandon Brownson, signing out.